conversation brought to you with uh, Dr. Uh, Pat Shannon from the Indiana Regional Medical Center by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. So we talked with you about uh, old 10 days or so ago when information uh, was what it was at that time and much more information has come along now. I want to talk first, if I could, about what we know more about COVID-19 or the coronavirus itself than we knew about 10 days ago. I'm sure that you've learned a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've, we've learned some things. There, there has not been a terrible amount of change of information. Um, I mean, listen, we know it's here now. Uh, it's, it's on our doorstep. That's the one thing we do know for sure. Uh, and we continue to make preparations at Indiana Hospital to combat this virus and take care of our patients. Um, you know, there's some promising uh, treatments that are going to be undergoing clinical trial. I'm sure everybody's hearing about the hydroxychloroquine as well as the Zithromax, uh, as well as the convalescent serum donors. So uh, I think the full weld of American science is, is coming at this thing rapidly, uh, and we are continually looking at the most up-to-date medical information that we can formulate treatment plans for any patients that we may receive. So in regards to the virus, there has not been much that has changed, but our preparations are advancing. One of the things people are asking is, uh, since this is a virus, uh, is there much chance that it's going to come back and be a seasonal type of thing like the flu is? So there's, at this point in time, we, we don't have enough information uh, to adequately address that question, even at a national level. Uh, they just don't know. Could this be a seasonal situation? It could be. There's no doubt. And that's why it's so important that we develop a vaccine as soon as possible. Yeah. Now, a vaccine, they, they say, in the general course of time, takes 12 to 18 months. And so um, that being the case, uh, there's going to be a lag uh, if it does come back around again. Uh, hopefully, by then, we'll have a better idea of how to quickly and aggressively treat things like this. Uh, but but these things do take time because you really have to study what are the effects and the side effects of a vaccine, don't you? Yeah, that, that's correct. And I believe it was early last week in Seattle they did inject the first patient, the, the first vaccine into a trial patient. Uh, it will obviously take some time to see if they actually develop an immunity to that. But I do look for a vaccine to be available probably within the next 8 to 12 months. I don't think the FDA, I think the FDA is going to probably cut a lot of red tape and allow that to happen. Now that uh, COVID-19 has come to the area, are are there any new measures people should be taking uh, to protect themselves, or should we just keep to the basics that we've been following? I think if we stick to the basics and do it well, nothing else really needs to happen. And the basics are the self-isolation, the social distancing, hand washing is absolutely key. So I don't think there's any new measures that need to be taken. I think that if you, know, if, we, if you do the basics really in anything in your life extremely well, you'll be ahead of 95% of the general population. Yeah. So I think it's the basics. The one thing I would like to just mention is on uh, social media and the news, we've been seeing a lot about the hydroxychloroquine uh, as well as Zithromax. And I would just advocate that no one buys hydroxychloroquine on the Internet and self-medicates. Uh, that drug has to be prescribed in a very controlled dose fashion. And uh, already in the United States, we have seen a few overdose deaths uh, for people buying hydroxychloroquine off the Internet or taking somebody else's medication and actually dying from it. It is a drug that has to be closely monitored and closely dosed. Yeah, and, you know, people might have extra Z-packs laying around um, or something left over that they didn't take like they were supposed to. Um, and whatever medications you have uh, there in the medicine cabinet, this is not the time to try them. That's correct. Yeah. What about those folks that we're hearing are trying to come up with their own solutions or finding something on the Internet, and uh, they're, they're just going ahead and, and making up their own mix? Uh, it would seem to me to be doubly or, or triply the case that uh, that's not a good idea at all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly correct. That is not a good idea. Um, Creating home pharmaceuticals uh, is just not good. Uh, it could be just a toxicology nightmare. So I would only take medications prescribed by your physician. 
uh, at the proper dosages and, and the proper monitoring parameters. I know that at IRMC you're meeting daily and sometimes three or four times a day to talk about uh, the progression of COVID-19, its presence here in our community. We hear about a shortage of supplies at other hospitals, about contingencies for extra capacities uh, uh, from hotels to college dorms. Um, what's IRMC's position? Do you have a handle on, on all of that? Yeah, so we do meet daily. Uh, we do have some plans in place. Some of our uh, local businesses have reached out to us. We do have a uh, surge capacity plan. Uh, I'm not going to really comment on that any further, but it is something that's discussed daily. You know, you talk about a surge, and, and it goes back to your just a few moments ago when we were talking about what to do. Mm-hmm. The reason this this self-isolation and social distancing is so important is because you hear about flattening the curve. The curve really, if you look at the curve, it's the uptick in the number of cases over time. What we want to do is bring that curve down because there is a line that will cut through that curve, and that line represents our ability to provide the public with health at this hospital. If that curve goes too high, it will exceed that line, and our system will be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the reason why the public, you know, IRMC, we're really trying our best to, to be viable, and we are at this point in time, but we are preparing for a surge. But the public, if they could practice uh, these measures of social distancing and decrease the caseload that we may have to see on any given day, it's going to be a huge help. Yeah. We see with the state's weekly flu report, uh, it's kept as a bar graph there. Uh, and on that bar graph, we can see the surges as they happen. And we can see that once things do start to slow down, um, it seems as if every week they slow down a little bit more. And, and obviously, you don't want them to get to those high peaks. You want to, that's, that's what flattening the curve is all about, so that hospitals are not overwhelmed. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I'd just like to put out there is, you know, we are accepting donations of masks from businesses. Uh, if there's anyone out there that's listening, any industry that has extra masks, gowns, gloves, things of that nature, they can be... Uh, dropped off the hospital. Uh, we would truly appreciate any donations. Currently, our supplies are stable, but we are preparing for the worst-case scenario, which would be a surge. And when I say a surge, I mean one day you're seeing three or four possible COVID-19 patients. The next day you may see 50. Yeah. And that's kind of what's happening in New York right now at this point in time. Yeah. One of the things we talked with you about a week or so ago was uh, the way that the staff is handling things there at IRMC. And, and folks were so impressed uh, by it. Um, not substantially different now. I mean, you, you've tightened things up a little bit more in terms of visitation, but uh, people should expect that they're going to have that protective, protective layer uh, from IRMC when they show up on campus for for a medical reason. Yeah, that that's correct, Todd. We uh, you know we went into this thing you know, a week and a half to two weeks ago and tightened the reins in probably sooner than any other hospital in this area did. So really, uh, our strategy hasn't changed because we ran after it right from the get go. Obviously, there will the screens are in place. It can be somewhat of an inconvenience for somebody coming on campus, but it's for everybody's protection. Yeah, it was explained to me a week or so ago about, or a few days ago, when it it appeared that uh, the United States has had more COVID cancers than than China or even Italy. Uh, that well, the reason we know about it is because there's so many more tests available now. America has really ramped it up. Uh, testing at uh, IRMC and and all around Western PA, it, it's really important, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we're, it, it's still somewhat problematic in this area, obtaining uh, the swabs and the test media. Uh, we, we are performing tests at IRMC campus only on a certain subset of patients that really meet um, the mark as far as being somebody that has positive COVID or possible COVID-19. Uh, testing has ramped up, especially in the eastern portion of the state. The UPMC is doing some of their own testing. Uh, but it, it is we're, our test turnaround times are actually improving. We're able to get a test back in about 24 hours, um, but but that that all depends on how many tests we have. We're still having some difficulty obtaining the swabs to perform a test. 
Yeah, and so that makes it even more important that folks follow procedures so when they suspect or when they're just not feeling well, uh, so maybe it's good to repeat that. Um, where if you suspect anything, uh, you, you might have a symptom uh, that you are, are wanting to be tested for, it's not a good idea to just head off to the hospital and get a test or, or even go to your doctor to get a test. You should call your primary care, correct? Yeah, that's a really good point, uh, Todd. You know, the really, if you suspect, if you're having mild symptoms and you're having, uh, you know, mild uh, fever, mild cough, uh, no shortness of breath, stay home. Um, you know, likely if you had come to campus and you would appear mild, you would not receive a test. Uh, we're only reserving those tests for patients experiencing severe symptoms and those patients that may need admitted to the hospital. So when, you know, my, my advice to patients would be if you are feeling okay and you're not experiencing any severe symptoms, severe cough, shortness of breath, weakness, uh, stay home, uh, monitor your symptoms, take your, your Tylenol, uh, hydrate yourself. You can call your PCP. Um, the Indiana Physicians Group right now is very active with telemedicine, uh, and they have been seeing patients over the the internet for uh, the past week or so. So I, I my I only come to the RMC campus if uh, you feel you are in significant need of an evaluation at this time. Absolutely. We're going to have Dr. Scholl on the air with us on Tuesday to talk about telemedicine and uh, how important that is. Dr. Pat Shannon, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been really, really informative. All right. Thanks, Todd. Have a great day. You too. We'll see you. And there you go. It is the voice. And there you go. It is the voice.